is going on? Welcome back to the Wild Podcast. I am your host, Jeffrey Zamore. And I am super, super excited again for another episode, another conversation. Just getting a chance to spend time with you guys and just be able to give you guys some words of wisdom. But as always, I hope your week is going well. I hope if you if you feel like you're not having a great week, I pray that this week changes. I pray and pray that your week will be a phenomenal, phenomenal week. You know, with this with this channel, with this episode or any episodes that I drop, it's always about positivity, but it's also about words of wisdom. It's always about us being able to move forward, us becoming more closer with God and with Christ. And you guys get a chance to enter into my world even more. But as always, before we start any conversation, we pray. You know, we got to make sure that we bless this podcast with God's presence. So please, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for all that you do. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, for dying on the cross so our sins can be cleansed, Father God. We pray that his work has been finished and that even when we feel discouraged, we know that there is victory on the other end. We thank you, Father God, that for always validating us when the world does not validate us, Father God. And with this conversation, I pray that you will open the hearts and ears of those who need to hear this very message. And I pray that it will bless them, Father God. I pray, Father God, that they will feel and be reminded that they are loved by you. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, how many times throughout your journey of life that you felt that you had to impress somebody or you felt that you had to be validated by somebody, right? I know for myself, there was one point, one point in time in my life where I felt I had to fit in with a certain group, right? And I'm talking, I'm not talking about high school or middle school or anything like that at all. I'm speaking actually in my adult hood. Actually, this was not that long ago. And I feel like I had to kind of somewhat fit in. I was going through a whole new phase and a whole new transition in my life. And I feel like I had to kind of somewhat fit in. And when I mean fit in, I feel like I had to be validated by people just to feel like, hey, you know what? That I could speak the same language as you guys, right? I could um, be as, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I can be like-minded like you guys. And, and, and the reality is I already was, but because it was a whole new group for me and I was going through this whole new transition, whole new season and season, and I was already in a point in my life where I didn't want to lose anything else. So I wanted to hold on to the things I was able to hold on to, even if it meant compromising myself in some shape or form. So I wanted to be validated by people. But the reality is, is that when we look to be validated by man, when we look to be validated by people, we're going to be disappointed. We're going to get hurt. It's just this unfortunate, sad reality because I say this all the time. People are flawed. People will disappoint you because people have their own perspective. People have their own opinion. People have their own outlook. People have their own troubles. People have their own drama and trauma that they're, st that they're still dealing with and may not been, maybe haven't healed from, right? And so because of that, people will oftentimes maybe even project on you or you may project on them because you're looking to be validated in some shape or form. And by going down that route, going down that road, you're going to be lost. You're going to be hurt because you want to be validated by people who may end up violating you. Right. So on Friday, this is how this whole conversation started on Friday. I was working, you know, just trying to, you know, catch up with some work, got some projects and deadlines and things like that. I got to, you know, I need to handle and I'm just sitting there sitting and it just hit me one. I don't know. And I believe it was God. Right. It just hit me and it, and it literally, I clearly felt this in my spirit and it says, don't be concerned about those who violate you, but be more focused on the one who validates you. And who's the one who validate us? It's God. God is the one who, who, who validate 
us. Like he is the one who will open up the doors for us. He's the one who reminds us that we were created in his image. He's the one who reminds us that we are the head and we're not the tail, that we are loved by him unconditionally and that he has favor and mercy over, over our life. That's why I always preach this all the time and speak on it so much because I feel like we don't often hear that as much as we should, especially in the church, right? Depending on the church that you go to. Um, I was having a conversation with a coworker and she was telling me that um, she was calling to uh, check up on me to see how I was doing and so forth. And we got into like a whole a great, amazing conversation and we we're talking about church. And so we're talking about church and you talking about the church that she, that she used to go to. She still kind of goes to it, but she's starting to transition out to a different church. And, but the church that she was going to, she said she would often feel not only herself, but other church members feeling defeated. They would, she would leave the church feeling not validated, right? She would often leave the church feeling maybe more sad and up and upset and maybe even depressed at times. And to me, I'm telling her, I was like, man, yeah, I know the feeling because I remember going to a church kind of like that where you just you go to church, you wake up that Sunday morning, ready to hear a good word, but you leave there feeling beat up. And that's never God's intentions, right? God's never, his intentions is never to make us feel less than what we are. But what happens is that sometimes when it comes to, whether if it's church or just people, people in general, right? People will often project their own traumas and issues on to you they will violate you instead of validating you right we could call people out for mistakes that they've made right we can hold people accountable if they you know made a bad decision i'm a firm believer in that like i feel like we don't do that enough especially in this day and age i feel like we make excuses for a lot of things that goes on within our own community right and yes of course there are things i say this all the time there are things that has plague the black community and it has pushed and held us back. But at the same time, I do feel like as well, especially with this generation that we make a lot of excuses for them. And so you can just see a shift in a different direction that this generation is going into that. I feel like it's just not, we're not going in the right path and we're kind of just letting them loose when we need to guide them more. Like there's not enough OGs or just not enough, um, to sit there and speak to it. And even so a lot of times they don't really respect what we got to say, but that's a whole nother conversation. I don't want to get off topic, but my point is, is that she left this church or she started looking at a different church because she, she started to realize, I feel like, yo, this, I know this is not God, right? Cause God validate us. Like he can correct me cause he will, right? If I'm, if I'm living a carnal life, right? He is going to correct me. And just because he correct me doesn't mean that he doesn't love me. But sometimes we get so caught up into this fire and brimstone and, you know, the wrath of God. And he's going to send you to hell just because you made one mistake. It's just not true. Because then what was the point of Jesus dying on the cross? What was the point of Jesus saying it was, it's finished? There's no point of Jesus saying that if it's like we still got to go back into the old school ways or that you commit a sin that you're done. Like, I remember hearing this one pastor say, like, you know, judge the sin not the sinner and i love that so much because it's just that reminder of like how god looks at us like god judges the sin not the sinner so he judges the sin that we commit but he doesn't judge us because he looks what's in our heart because remember again he validates us remember we were created in his image like in in, in genesis genesis states I believe it's Genesis 1 chapter. Let's actually just get into it real quick. But in Genesis, and he states that let's let me create mankind in my likeness, in my image. Right? So God already had a vision on how we were going to look. God wasn't like, yo, I'm gonna have him look like something else. Right? No, that's not what God's intention. It wasn't like God was like, okay, I'm not I don't want him to look like me. I want him to look like a bird, or I want them to I want mankind to look like an elephant no he created those animals and he had us actually name or add a name each and one of those animals but he gave us um power and authority to have um to be in control of all these animals why because he trusted us because he validated 
us. Let's go ahead and go into that scripture. And so we could actually break it down. So in Genesis chapter one, verse 26 to 27, it states that God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, then let them have domain over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air and over the cattle, over the, all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image an image of God. He created him male and female. He created them. To me, that sounds like, again, validation. Like why would God create us and his image just for us not to be validated by him? God understands like, yeah, we're going to mess up. We're going to drop the ball. But he still validate us like he can use any and any body that he wants, no matter how flawed they are, no matter how messed up they are. And use them for his glory. That's what he does. This that that's that's what God's in the business of doing so he can use any and anybody that he want. He used David. He used Moses. He uses Paul. He used Abraham. We could go down the list and they all, when you read the story of each and one of these individuals, you can see a flaw, a characteristic flaw in them. Abraham was a liar, right? Paul was a murderer because he, he wanted to crucify Christians. David was a murderer and, you know, David was scandalous. Moses, he had issues when it came to how he, you know, how he spoke, you know, he wasn't confident in himself. You know, he actually was denying God when God was telling him that he wanted him to go to Israel to free his children from the Pharaoh. And he was like, nah, 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 you know, let this, you know, you, I, I don't want to do it. You know, I can't really speak that well. Like he, he, you know, he was trying to find all these different excuses, but God used them anyways. Right. God used them. Like there is, Characteristic characteristic flaws with almost any anybody that you read in the Bible outside of Jesus. Jesus is the only one that was perfect, the son of the son of God, the only one who was perfect, who didn't really have a characteristic flaw, right? But anybody else, you can see that. Hey, you know what? Noah, Noah was a drunk. Uh, another one, but God still used them according to His will where he see fit he validate them he validated them because he has a greater purpose and a greater will for their life just like he has a greater purpose and will for your life as well that's what god is in the business of of of, of doing so the world is going to make sure that we're not validated the world is going to bring us down it's gonna put us down it's 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 rough out there let's be honest it really is but who controls the world who is who is the one in the who it has a, a stronghold on the world right now and that's satan the enemy he does you can see even like the times that we're living now you can see a lot of satanic demonic influences that's taking place and it gets justified if we're going to be real it gets justified if we're going to be honest right Satan's job is to stop the will of God. Satan's job is to kill, steal, and destroy, as the word says. And so if we're not careful and understand who we are in Christ, we are going to allow ourselves to be violated by the world and forget that we've already been um, validated by God. We're going to seek approval from those who we don't need to seek approval from. We're going to look to be praised by people who really are praying for our downfall. And that's why we have to be careful on who we idolize, what we look into, and what kind of things that we ingest into our minds. Because if we're not careful, again, we will start, um, we'll start to forget who God had called us to be. And that's why this conversation, in my opinion, is, is is super, super important. And it speaks into the times of now. Like, I'm I'm not going to lie. Just like most people, I love to go on social media, right? I'll go on IG. 
I'll, you know, scroll down and, you know, go through my timeline, probably spend more time on IG. I probably should. And a lot of times I'd be like, man, I don't need to be on IG. There's not really a lot of great. There, there are some great things on IG, but there's also a lot of like craziness that's on IG. Um, but I'll just go on IG and just spend time on that or whatever. You know, I'm, I'm kind of caught up into it and I need to scale back. I know, I know I, I got to chill out on, on, on IG and TikTok, TikTok too. TikTok is a little addicted. I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of great information you can learn on, on, on TikTok, by the way. But anyways, but when you go through the comments section, whether well, it's through Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or any social media platform, you can see some of the mindsets of people. And you can see how people do or people clout chase. People do things to get likes, to get um, people to repost or reshare their content. And people go to the extreme just to feel like they're being validated by, you know, millions of people who one that they will never see two probably never have like a, a real face to face conversation with. And three probably don't really care about them if we're going to be honest, but it's, it's because like popularity or, or, or not popular. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, clout. There you go. Clout is the new drug. It really, really is. It's it is a new drug, and people are willing to do any and anything to get the popularity and the likes and the shares that they want. See, with me, with my YouTube channel and my podcast, the Wild Podcast, I'm be very honest. I am not that concerned about how many likes, how many shares. Or even the views, to be honest, I, I really don't. Even though I know beginning of the video, I said, you know, if you do like this content, please like, share, and subscribe. But, and, and the reason I'm saying it is because not so much it's going to help with the algorithm and things like that. Yes, all those things are great. It's the icing on the cake, in my opinion. But for me, if I'm going to be very honest, is as long as one person hears this message or any message that I drop and it helps transform their lives in a positive way, then I did my job. Because again, for me, I'm doing this because I want to make sure that I'm honoring God. I want to make sure that God is happy. I want to make sure that I'm doing his work to help his kingdom, to help advance his kingdom. It's about him. It really is. It's really, really about God. Really about God. If God's not in it, I don't want it. If God's not for it, I don't want it. I don't because God's the one who validates me. God's the one who created me. I'm created in God's image. So he's the one that I, I really want to please. He's the one that I want to make sure that he is good because I know if God is good, he's going to bless you more than I can imagine. And so for me, it's, it's making sure that even if there's times I feel like I'm not doing it perfectly, even if I feel like I stumble, I want to make sure that I am pleasing God in every shape of, and form. And this and this is this is the whole purpose of the wild podcast. This is the whole purpose of the words of wisdom podcast is to touch those that may feel like, hey, you know what? I, man, I'm I'm lonely in this world. I feel like, man, you know, I'm always messing up. I don't know what to do. Like I was at church um last month. Last month I was having a conversation with a young man at my church, and we had a great conversation. Um I, I gave a I gave a testimony. And after we started talking, he was, you know, he was picking my brain and he was asking like, yo, how do you like trust in God and, and have faith in God that God's going to do these things? And he does these things in your life. And I'm like, yo, you just got to have faith. You just got to believe. And for me, it's, it's, it's just kind of just keeping things simple. Right. And I kept it simple in a sense of like, when I get up in the morning and I go to the gym, hop in my car, I drive to the gym, get to LA fitness I have faith I'm going to get to my destination and I'm going to get back home, right? I don't really think so much like when I get in the car and like what happens if I get into a car accident or what happens if my car breaks down on the way to the gym or what happens if I don't have a good workout. I don't think about that. I have faith that I'm going to get to the gym. I'm going to complete my workout and I want to be able to come back home. You know what I'm saying? I don't really think about fear. I think about what the objective is and what I'm going to do to accomplish that objective. So when it comes to faith with God, 
I don't really think about things anymore. I allow God to handle it. There's been times I'll say, God, I'm in need of this and this, and I don't know how I'm going to get it, or I'm, I don't even know how I'm going to obtain it, but I have faith in you that you're going to deliver. And you know what? He delivers. I don't think about it no more. I don't have fear about it no more. I just trust in him and he delivers every single time. You know why? Because he validates. He validates me. He validates you because there's mercy and favor in God. And again, I'm not a perfect human being. I don't have a perfect past. So we don't, you don't need to worry about like, man, the things that I did last year, or the things I did yesterday, or things that I did a couple of years ago, whatever it is, God still can validate you. The moment you come into his kingdom, the, more, the, the moment you say that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and that he died for my sins, God is validating you because you're, 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 you're asking God to come into your life. You're asking God to come into your world and to be the center of your world. And that you are surrendering, trusting in him. And that's that's the key thing. That's the secret source is like, hey, God, I'm allowing you to take to control my life. And people are fearful off of that because like, man, if God controls my life, then I have no control. That's not true. It's just that when there are things that are out of your control, you allow God to handle it. You allow God to bless you. You know, God's going to ask, you know, you, you know that God's going to give you favor. Like you can go to God and ask for things. You can go to God and say, God, hey, I need this and watch him deliver according to his will. He will make it happen. A lot of times we don't have things because we don't ask. We don't have them repeat that. We don't have things because we don't ask. Why not go to your father who validates you, who's not going to violate you, but he's only going to validate you. Why not go to him and ask him like, hey, God, I'm not making enough money at my current job. I need a new job. Watch him. Watch him deliver. God, I need a new car. The car that I have right now, it's 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 not really doing it. I'm not able to get a point A to point B the way I need to. I need a new car. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I know you're going to make it work. Ask. Ask God. God, I need a man. God, I need a wife. Watch him deliver. Watch him do what he do. I, I've seen this not only in my own life, but I've seen it with so many other people's life where because they are faithful, but because they, but most importantly, they trust in God and they ask, ask and you shall receive. You don't receive because you don't ask. Ask because God, God is going to bless you. Why? Because he validates you. He doesn't violate you like the world does. The world will violate you. But God will, vi will will validate you. Believe me when I when I when I tell you this. I have a friend who recently got engaged, and we have a very similar story. And I remember when me and him first connected. We first connected, and we realized we have a similar story. I mean, we became super close. Like that's that's my guy. And I remember telling him like, "Yo," because you know at the time I was already I was dating. I didn't I wasn't engaged to my wife yet. Um, but we were close to getting engaged and he admired our relationship. And then of course I got engaged, got married and then boom. And he was like, man, I really would love to have something like you guys. And I told him, like, you're going to have it. You're going to have it. I guarantee you're going to have it, man. God is going to bless you with that partner. And then sure enough, God did. But not only that, my man is engaged, happily engaged, man. And that's because he had faith. That's because God validated him. God didn't look at his past. God didn't look at his mistakes. God didn't look at anything. He went to God and prayed to God and asked God. And he, he said this himself, that he told God that, hey, if it's not from you, I don't want it. I only would, only want was from you. And then God blessed him because God validated him. That is the beauty of God. Isaiah 61. Let's go ahead and dive into some more scriptures here. Isaiah 61, verse 7 through 8. Instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy double share of your honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity for your land and everlasting joy will be yours. 
For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make make them an everlasting covenant with them. When I went through my most deepest such a huge struggle in my life where I felt lost, depressed, and severe anxiety, I remember the scripture came up and I knew it was God. God talked to me through the scripture and I read the scripture religiously. Every morning I was getting up like at five in the morning, I was reading the scripture and I believed it. I believed it. Instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. And I kept on reading that over and over and over again. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully reward my people for their suffering and make them an everlasting covenant with them. And I remember praying, praying, praying that. And then God spoke to me through the scripture and he delivered. This very scripture, what he states, it came to life in my life. I'm telling you, God is amazing. Like there's nothing that God will not do. There's nothing that separates us from the love of God. Romans chapter eight, verse 38, it says it right here. For I am convinced that there's nothing that can ever separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. That's Romans chapter eight, verse 38. And actually, let's go ahead and go even before that verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 27, it says, And the Father who knows all hearts and knows what the Spirit is saying, for the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and who call the court, call the court into his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance. You hear that? In advance. And he chose them to be like his son so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And them, and them having, wait, I'm sorry. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them the right standing, he gave them his glory. So right there again, that is a clear sign of validation. God knew his people in advance. He already knew who we were and what we was. And then we have this famous scripture. That I want to leave it with this. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set apart and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. This is Jeremiah chapter one, verse five. So in the next time that you feel that the world is violating you, just remember who validates you. And that's God. Until the next episode, as always, one love. You know how to do it. <laughs>